Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. I'm from the uh, University of Arkansas. I'm a PhD student. Um, I always get the last talk in the day. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try to make it quick, but in the time. Uh, try to get it done as much detail as I can. Um, so I'm always, uh, my focus is on uh, lexicon. Sentiment analysis using lexicon. And uh, this work is focusing on uh, domain-specific lexicon. Uh, let's go through the, the, the overview real quick. Uh, I'll go through a brief introduction. Uh, then we uh, talk about the motivation of the work, uh, the approach that we used, uh, the result that we get and uh, that we got, and the uh, excited part is the discussion actually. Uh, so everyone, I guess everyone knows what sentiment analysis is, but, but uh, if you still have doubt, um, that's a brief description, computational analysis of opinion text. So basically when you have a piece of text, the computer doesn't know what it means. It doesn't know what, what the words are. Uh, all it knows is that it's words. But um, sentiment analysis focuses on trying to teach the computer to uh, get the meaning of words and then extract the uh, actual sentiment of the text. That is, is the text positive, negative, neutral, very positive, etc., etc. Um, there is a different level of granularity. Um, I'll be focusing on the deck document level, that is, uh, doing sentiment analysis on the whole document. But you can also as well uh, do that on the sentence level, uh, like the previous speaker uh, mentioned. Uh, aspect entity level, actually. As with the previous talk. And uh, so there are different approaches. Uh, supervised learning works well. So we have a SVM classifier, a naive bias classifier, etc., etc. And you've got what we call unsupervised uh, method that most of the time uses lexicon, which is what we will be focusing on. So um, a lexicon is just a dictionary, so it's a list of words uh, mapped to a score or a sentiment orienta orientation or sentiment strength uh, could be both. Sometimes you have different um, polarity annotation, uh, here are a few. So discrete uh, annotation is just basically you have a word and it's either positive, negative, or neutral. Then you have the continuous um, priority annotation, which is assigning an actual continuous score to the word. Uh, oftentimes it's between uh, negative one and uh, positive one, and that the kind of score we will be focusing on in this talk. Uh, you also have fractional polarity annotation. Um, it's kind of like senti word net. That's kind of what they do. So you basically have a word, and then you have its uh, positivity, its negativity, and its uh, subjectivity. Um, then you have what we call emotional sentiment. It's it's kind of new. Well, I think it's the latest uh, polarity annotation. Um, it, it's kind of like discrete, but it's, uh, it, it's using um, a sentiment word instead of uh, being just positive or negative. Um, so you can, there's mainly three techniques to generate a lexicon. You can generate manually, uh, but we don't do that anymore. Um, there's a dictionary approach, so basically you have a list of seed words that you know the sentiment, such as good, bad, uh, best, worst, happy, blah, blah, blah. And then you go through a dictionary and grab the synonym of your seed words and you expand your list of seed words based on the synonyms. And uh, there's also the corpus approach, which is kind of what we are doing in this work. So um, the motivation, like I said, I'll be focusing on the lexicon and um, there's a statement that is very important in sentiment analysis and uh, it, is, it is sentiment classification is dependent upon the context in which it's used. Um, so there are a lot of work about, uh, around that um, and uh, that raises a lot of questions when we use lexicons such as uh, what, what would be the uh, effect on the sentiment analysis task when you focus on domain-specific lexicon, what would be the effect on the actual lexicon? Um, 
can a word be positive in one domain, negative in another domain? And of course it is. Um, but those are the questions that rises from the statement above. And um, we also compare the how do you uh, general lexicon do in the sentiment analysis task as compared to domain specific lexicon. That's the point of the, the talk. So um, the first part is how to create that lexicon. So we, uh, we use the uh, Amazon data set uh, from 15 categories uh, listed here on the right. Um, the Amazon product reviews are rated from one star to five stars. Uh, we only do binary classification in this work, so positive, negative. So every neutral uh, product previews are actually uh, removed from the data set because you, you cannot extract the polarity of the, of the words because well, the review is neutral. Um, we split every data set into 80-20%, uh, so 80% for testing, creating the lexicon, and 20% for, 80 for training, sorry and 20% for testing. Um, so we mo mostly focus on this part. Then the sentiment analysis method that we use is very basic. It's basically we grab every word of the sentence and we add up the score from the lexicon. If the uh, final score is positive, then the review is deemed to be positive. If the final score is negative, then the review is deemed to be negative. Uh, it's a very simple approach, but turns out to, um, to work well. Um, so yeah, this is the one part of the... So I, I don't really like formulas on my slides, but I know, I know some people do. So that's probably going to be your favorite slide on the, on the talk. Um, so basically, we calculate the probabilistic score of the word, and it's based on the work of Frank and who care? Maybe. Sure. Uh, which, so his work is uh, using naive bias, um, the bias theorem uh, applied to text classification with unbalanced classes. Because as you can see uh, on the data set, it's very biased toward the positive reviews. So there are much more positive reviews than negative reviews in all data sets. So, um, the probabilistic score has two components, the positiveness of the word and the negativeness of the word. And the final score, the, the probabilistic score of the word is just the positiveness subtracted from the negativeness. So, if the negative, in other term, if the negativeness is less than the, the, if the positiveness is less than the negativeness, then you end up with a negative score and the word is deemed to be uh, negative. Uh, so, these are the formula, we can go through it real quick, but um, so basically the positive component of the word, uh, it, it is based on the on Bayes' theorem. Um, probability of cost is the uh, proportion of positive reviews in the data set. P of W is the uh, number of occurrences of W of the word W in the data set. And then uh, the most important part is uh, P of W given the positive class or the negative class. So um, the, the formula is right there, but what it says technically is uh, if you were to use the uh, traditional Bayes theorem, there is such uh, there's so much more positive reviews than the score will end up being positive, no matter what you do, because the, uh, the class is really unbalanced. Uh, to account for that, uh, Frank and Booker um, came up with a nice formula that we uh, adapted for that work, and uh, it's basically what you have here. So, PW of pos is, so the term, this term is uh, the number of occurrences of W in the positive class or the negative class, uh, depending on the case, divided by, by the number of occurrences of every other word in the dictionary, uh, plus one, so you have to um, 
some you know, digital multiplication. And uh, it's, the overall is divided by the, the size of the dictionary. So you end up with a score uh, between 0 and 1. Then the other component of the score is the uh, information theoretic score. Um, this one is based on the TF-IDF, uh, which you have the definition on the left. And um, it uses some, like a term that we introduced called the balanced relative term frequency, which is basically the relative term frequency of a word within a sentence. Um, but we use like a, we use the, uh, the gamma factor to account for the, uh, no, sorry. It's the relative, the relative term frequency of the word, and to account for unbalanced classes, uh, we multiply by n and divide by n neg. n is the total number of review, and uh, n neg n plus the total number of positive and negative review. So that accounts for the uh, unbalanced classes. And uh, basically the score of a word is then the arithmetic mean of the probabilistic score and the information theoretic score. And of course you have to scale them because they're on different scale. So you scale them back to a minus one to one and uh, then you compute the arithmetic mean. Uh, so we computed that on uh, every domain. And we ended up with 15 uh, lexicons, so 15 domain-specific lexicons. And uh, those are, those are the, uh, some statistics, some numbers about the lexicons. But uh, what, we, what I want to point out is actually the size. So when we use a generic lexicon using the same method, um, the size is much, much bigger. It's 130,000 words. Uh, while the domain-specific lexicons are much, much smaller, the actually uh, movies and uh, CDs and vinyl. The reason is the uh, reviews in those domains tend to be much longer. For some reason, people like to write more in, the, in those two domains. And um, so we uh, we run the sentiment analysis task that I mentioned earlier on the. Amazon product review, and uh, so we compare the uh, generic lexicon with the domain-specific lexicon to see what, how, how, how they compare to each other. Um, one of the baselines is also the CentiWordNet lexicon, so we grab the CentiWordNet uh, lexicon, and uh, on the actual website, it's, there's a, a formula to approximate the word, the score of each word, that you can find on the website. So you end up with a word and a score instead of having a word with three scores and the uh, plus tag for those who know the center word in Mexico. Um, so when we compare the <coughs> specific lexicon and the generic uh, lexicon, we can notice that we are much more accurate, in fact. Um, we, yeah, we, we gain approximately 3.5% accuracy uh, using our own generic lexicon and uh, we gain 10% accuracy compared to CentiWordNet. Um, you have a few numbers here on the top. Um, so CentiWordNet ranges from 76% to 84% accuracy while our uh, domain specific lexicons ranges from 84 to 92% uh, which is actually much better. So, oh yeah, and it, it, it works. It actually works in all domains. So the uh, dark bar is the domain-specific uh, accuracy and F1 score. The <coughs> middle one is the generic lexicon that we created. And the, uh, the light one is the central net lexicon. And uh, as we can see, the domain-specific lexicon is more accurate in every domain, actually. And the F1 score is better in every domain which proves that, well, the, when you run sentiment analysis, the context is really important and uh, I think it should be taken into consideration. Now, here's the few points I would like to uh, highlight. So, 
we notice that some words uh, don't vary much depending on the lexicon. So we uh, computed the standard deviation for each word across the 15, uh, 15 domains. And uh, the first part, the upper part of the table is the words that we call stable. So it, it, those are words that don't change uh, across all lexicon, actually. As you can see, trafficker has the same score um, from movie. So you have the lowest score and the highest score. So the lowest score is 0 0.017. The highest is 0 0.017, which is the same. So uh, that word doesn't change across 15, the 15 domains. Uh, this remains true for a few words. Well, those are just examples, but we have a lot of them. Uh, as compared to that, we have what we call variable words. Those words uh, often have an opposite meaning, an opposite orientation, uh, depending on the context. Here was a few, uh, so we have a few examples. Work is actually negative in the video games, and uh, it's actually positive in CD and vinyls. Um, broke, broke is a good example, actually. I, I like this one. Broke is negative in cell phones, and it's positive in, in books. And uh, I have an example, actually, here. So the first review is a, it's a negative review from the, the cell phone domain uh, that uses the, the, the word broke. So this item broke right away, plus it never click in, so it always come off. Uh, this is, of course, a negative review where the, the word broke has a negative connotation. On the second review, I'm not going to read it, but uh, broke is here. But basically, the uh, author of the review used broke as a positive sense, and uh, it's actually pretty true in ev pretty much every uh, book review that we have. Um, people tend to use those words to uh, describe their feelings toward the book. So it's not toward the item that is being sold, but it's toward the content of the book. And uh, so broke tends to be positive in the book's uh, domain. Um, another interesting finding is uh, we have some words that only exist in some domain, uh, which is why the uh, lexicon are much smaller, actually. Um, so for instance, uh, impartition only exists in electronics, which makes sense, um, and it's actually a negative word. Uh, Noziousness only exists in health and care, uh, which also makes sense. So it, it's very interesting to me. Um, and th this also highlights the fact that uh, when you do sentiment analysis, I think it's really important to, uh, to know what domain uh, you're, you're going to run your sentiment analysis in, especially if you use lexicon, because like I said earlier, the computer doesn't know uh, what the meaning of the word is, but when you uh, analyze a, a huge amount of data from customers, then you can, you can get that information, actually. Um, yeah, we, uh, further, we uh, computed the, um, the rank of the lexicon. So we compared every lexicon against every domain to see how they perform and to see if there's an actual uh, correlation between the two facts. So what it means basically, if you focus on the table here, uh, the rank is the rank of the uh, lexicon in its home domain, and the average rank is the average rank of the lexicon across 15 domains. And uh, you then have the accuracy of the lexicon in, in its home domain and the average accuracy and uh, the interesting part is when you have an average rank that is high such as uh, so cell phone is 10 and uh, beauty is 10 um, the accuracy is actually uh, uh, how do you call it? well so 
when the average accuracy, when the average rank is higher, it, it, it means that the lexicon is more suitable to use across all domains. It means that the vocabulary is less bounded, it's, it's uh, less specific. So for instance, um, yeah, so the cell phone lexicon has a rank of 1 and uh, an average rank of 10, so it means that uh, it performs well in its own domain, but poorly across uh, other domains. And uh, we also analyze the coverage. The coverage is just the percentage of words that are actually in the lexicon. And uh, so if a lexicon has a higher coverage and a lower accuracy, so if you, if you compare a domain-specific lexicon and the generic lexicon, uh, the generic lexicon will have a higher coverage, but the accuracy will be less. Which means that, despite the fact that it covers more word, it's not it's less able to uh, accurately identify the orientation of the review. So that means that either the generic lexicon is missing some important word, or that the words that are in the lexicon are actually the score are not as accurate as they are in the specific lexicon. So that's basically what it means. And uh, so yeah, that's what I was saying. So although the coverage is equivalent, the sentiment score calculated ignoring domain boundaries are less accurate. And uh, so to conclude, uh, we believe that domain-specific lexicons are more accurate than generic lexicons. Uh, domain sentiment score are more indicative of sentiment than generic sentiment score. That's what I just said uh, on the previous uh, slide. And uh, as a future work, I'd like to use the lexicons in the supervised learning machine learning well, supervised uh, sentiment analysis such as a SVM classifier or RNNTN KN classification uh, to see how, because I know it's been done recently in Twitter, uh, Twitter datasets, they, they used a, a lexicon within an SVM classifier and it performed actually very well. So I'm curious to see how it performs with the product review technique. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer.